Welcome back to the second channel, guys. It is me, 80 sub for extra. And today we're going to be talking about the Bangladesh situation, guys. Yeah. This is such a depressing topic to discuss. So we're going to talk about my experience at Bangladesh, how it was alike, and my kind of my overall thoughts on the vacation itself. Uh, they were actually be looking at an article kind of giving us a better idea of what's going on and the situation and everything. And yeah, so like I said, guys, um, we're going to go ahead and do this, guys, and we're going to start. So let me start with my experience first. So I went to Bangladesh for two weeks, you know, because obviously you guys, if you guys don't know, I am a Bangladesh person. I have family that's in Bangladesh. A lot of my family lives in Bangladesh. And I have so many relatives, other cousins, my aunts, my uncles, you know, and it's just so many cousins. You know, I, 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 I could, I have, if I were to count everyone in my families, it would probably be a hundred people. It would probably be a hundred people because that's just how big my families are, especially on my mom's side in particular. So we spent there for around two weeks. And the thing that really sucked was that at the vacation itself, we really didn't get to spend much time you know, exploring, seeing new places because of how the curfew was, was, and, you know, the protests and everything, it was a lockdown, essentially, it was chaotic, there was no Wi-Fi, no service, you know, everything was just shut off, and it was just a terrible experience, and this is the, this is the first time I visited Bangladesh in a while, guys, the last time I visited Bangladesh was in 2016, it was eight years ago, and guys, I almost, we almost had a near-death experience, because we were actually going to, because my, um, for some reason, we decided to go restaurant on Friday, the day after the whole thing broke out. And it was actually fine because we were in Dhaka, you know, going to restaurants fine. And then on the way back was when it was chaos was ensued. And every time we were trying to leave, we literally heard gunshots. Gunshots were coming through. And we were trying to like, we were trying to like find a time to go. And every time we were trying to go, there was like gunshots being held and then eventually we got home like i think we left that we were trying to leave the restaurant at like four o'clock we ended up getting home at 5 30 that's just how crazy it was and then i remember i was walking on the neighbor walking on the street i should have taken a picture of this man and i literally saw blood blood on the thing and the thing is that we were just walking by we weren't even like protesting we weren't even like you know doing the just chance like the students were the students were going obviously doing uh they were being um you know we were we were just going through you know we were just innocent bystanders, bystanders, and the fact that we almost could have got killed was insane, and we were lucky that we survived, and that is probably the closest time I had to near death. That was the closest, because police were shooting at the people. Like it was just crazy, man. And eventually, Bangladesh decided, you know what? Enough is enough. We're gonna put everything on a curfew. We're gonna put everything in lockdown. And that only a certain amount of time in the day, you could do whatever you want, which is what we did the following day. We went to Sealet. We visited my family there. You know, we went to my family friend's house. Uh, fa uh, we went to my uncle's house. And then obviously we came back to Dhaka. And then we went to, uh, and then we, you know, went to Marmachine and went to Ishiguns. And yeah. So the thing for, uh, the thing is that it just, it was just chaos. Chaos ensued. And even though a lot of the protests itself and a lot of the chaos itself was particularly in Dhaka, the whole entire country was in lockdown. The whole entire country was locked down. So no matter where you were, you were gonna have to, you're gonna face some of the things. You know, obviously Dhaka being the worst. So it was just a terrible experience, absolute insanity, and it was it, it just it was just one of the most chaotic vacations I've ever had in my life. You know because. I did enjoy the vacation. I did enjoy spending time with my relatives and all that, but I wasn't able to enjoy it at its fullest because of we were we were pretty much at home for majority of the day, and it's it's just limited my time, you know. And it's such a shame that we spent so much money on this trip, only for us to realize it was it was probably a bad idea. And I'll keep it a stack with you guys. It was probably one of the worst times we went to Bangladesh, and this is probably the worst that Bangladesh has ever been in since the liberation war 1970 so it, it's just crazy man absolutely insanity and it's just a disappointment guys because it could have this vacation could have been one of my best vacations of all time instead it's probably one of the worst vacations of all time and it's not even for our fault it's because of what happened in the country so 
we're now going to look at an article that will help us get a clearer picture on what's going on. Because obviously, guys, I'm a person that just, you know, visit was visiting there. You know, I have family there. I don't really know that I don't really keep up to date with Bangladesh news and political stuff like that. So I think it's best that we look at a article that will help us break this down. So let me um, minimize my stuff real quick. So give me a few seconds, guys, while I get this here for you guys. So, yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So we're going to be using the um, um, this website here. So shout out to this website. And I believe it's Advanced Press. I believe it's Advanced Press. So let's go ahead and look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize my webcam and put the page right there. Okay, here we go. I'll put a link in the description below if you guys want to read this. So let's just start right here. So it said, Dhaka, Bangladesh, AP. Bangladesh was climbing back to normal sea with limited internet and office hours Wednesday after more than a week of chaos triggered by student protests or government job quotas. Yeah, that's pretty much the reason why there was so much protest going on was because of government job quotas. Nearly 200 deaths were reported in just over a week of violence. Most of the country remained without internet access, but thousands of cars were on the street of the capital Dhaka after authorities relaxed a curfew for seven hours. Offices and banks opened for a few hours Wednesday, while authorities restored broadband internet in some areas of Dhaka, the second largest city of Chattagram. Authorities said the curfew would continue Dhaka and elsewhere until the situation improves. Since July 16, at least 197 people have been killed in violence. The leading Bengali language, Pratham Alu Daily, reported Wednesday. The Associated Press could not cover the death toll from any official sources. Mohammed Ali Arfit, the country's ju junior minister for information broadcasting, told a news conference on Wednesday that the official casualty figures would be announced after a judicial in inquiry. He said a committee had been formed with the Supreme Court judge as its head as his heads to look into it. He made the remark to reporters as they visited the site of arson destruction of the state run Bangladesh television headquarters in Dhaka. While the government has pledged student protesters would would not face legal action or harassment, media reports said that nearly two thousand seven hundred have been arrested in, in, in recent days across the country. Many of the detainees, including opposition supporters, were sent to prison. Any further legal procedures as Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina pledged that perpetrators would face justice. Oh, uh, by the way, let me just say this right now, guys. Sheikh Hasina is a disgrace. Sheikh is a disgrace. Apparently, she said some really stupid words um, before the whole thing. And then and then I see in the news that, oh, she looks so sad and all this stuff. Like, are, I'm pretty sure, are those tears genuine? Are those tears genuine? I don't know, man. I don't know if those tears are genuine. But anyways, let's continue. Schools and other educational institutions have been remained closed until further notice. Clashes have taken place since July 15 between the police and mainly student protests demanding end to quarter the reserve. 30% of government jobs for relatives of veterans who fought Bangladesh the war of independence in 1971. The chaos became deadly after the country's main opposition in Bangladesh National Police Party and right wing Jamaat e Aslimi Party extended their support to the protest. While violence across, spread across the country, many government establishments were also under attack in Dhaka. On Sunday, the Supreme Court ordered the 1971 war veterans quarters going to be cut to 5%. Thus, 93% of civil, civil service jobs will be merit-based, while the remaining 2% are reserved for ethnic minorities as well as stranger disabled people. So, at least the protest came to at least somewhat of fruition that at least a war veterans quota went down. Uh, but at the same time, though, a lot of people had to be sacrificed. A lot of people had to be sacrificed. Internet had to go down. Like, it was just crazy. Like, like, anyways, let's continue. On Tuesday, the government issued a letter accepting a widening a Supreme Court ruling that reformed the quota system for government jobs. As seen as government welcomed the ruling and said it was ready to implement it. The protesters took time to respond to Sunday's decision, and on Tuesday, said the Supreme Court decision and subsequent government circular decisions were in favor of the protesters, but the government should answer for the bloodshed and deaths involved in the protests. That's a good question. Why did the government have to kill so many people? Like, I understand the government having to kill people that were, you know, doing stupid stuff with protesters, but there are a lot of innocent people that were just protesting, saying peaceful stuff, and getting killed. Guys, there was a guy that was, there was someone that was doing this celebration. You know the Jude Bellingham celebration, guys? Someone literally did this and still got killed. I, it, it just is mind-boggling to me what the government is doing, guys. It's, it's mind-boggling to me. Let's continue. The protesters have posed the most serious challenge to Bangladesh government since Hasina won the fourth conservative January elections that the main opposition groups boycotted. Universities have been closed, the internet has been shut off, and the government has ordered people to stay at home. The protesters argue the quota system was discriminatory and benefits supports the Hasina wars. Was Homi League Party ha ha led the independence movement and wanted to replace by a merit-based system. 
has seen his defend the court of system, saying that the veterans who fought and died and the women who were raped and tortured in Iceland deserve the highest respect with also political affiliation. This is where I don't agree with. For me, it should be meritocracy. I fully agree with the Awami League. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be nepotism. That's what pretty much it is. That's pretty much what it is, guys. You can't have nepotism. So I'm sorry. I don't I don't agree with this as as Cena's point whatsoever. The Omi League and the BNP have been often accused of each other of a fleeing political chaos and violence, most recently ahead of the country's national election, which was marred by a crackdown on several opposition figures. On Wednesday, the government relaxed the curfew from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and opened offices and banks from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., while garment factories that export mainly to Western countries also opened. Some major road sockets were clogged with traffic. Yep, I experienced that. Law Minister Hansuyu Hook has repeatedly said the violence became grave as the arm cadres of the opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party and right wing Jamit e Islami joined the protest and attacked many government solutions, including the headquarters of the state run Bangladesh Television, two tolls, pizzas, plazas of a flyover and expressway, two stations of Metro Rail and Dhaka. Hundred government owned vehicles were also touched. The headquarters of the main opposition party were raided and sealed off. Police said they recovered uh, sticks and iron rods, especially and locally made weapons from the opposition party's head and Dhaka. Okay, um, we're almost done. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. So we have like a, a few more paragraphs to go through. Okay, uh, Bumir, uh, Missouri, Farquhar, Islamic, Aglama, Security General, the main officer, went to the allegations, blaming the government for the huge number of deaths. I also blame as well. On Tuesday night, the authorities restored only brand on th- Tuesday night broadband service, partially in Dhaka and Chittagong for six days, said Zunim Ahmed Park Jr., Jr. Minister of Information and Communication Technology. He blamed the forces, called them mischance. For the day, for the days of internet outrages, the main data center was set on fiber. Fiber optic connections were cut. He said that internet would be rest- gradually restored across the country, but for now, corporate businesses, banks, zones, and other areas would get internet access. Almost a proxy that internet users would have broadband access at home, but I tell but the social media sites like including Facebook and Instagram would not likely be la- back online for a few days. Yeah, that's true. So even though the Wi-Fi came back, those sites are still not going. Uh, Facebook, Instagram are still very much down. So I think they also understood that you can't be having social media stuff like, you know, that that's going to be huge. And also, even though the Wi-Fi came back, the Wi-Fi was still very slow in Bangladesh. I even noticed. Uh, Pak also asked earlier people to ask trust mainstream media rather than social media not to believe rumors. This comes after curfew was shoot on site and was installed days earlier and military personnel could be patrolling the capital and other areas. Authorities said about two, two, 27,000 soldiers were deployed across the country to assist the civil administration maintain law and order yeah this was a very informative article i gotta say a very informative article so shout out to the ap news uh great great website and yeah so i i really don't have much more to add here that it was just a disgrace what happened in bangladesh the chaos ensued and at first it was like a peaceful protest but as the protests go on again became more violent and everything and i'm sorry i gotta blame a lot of the students a lot of the students at bangladesh did a lot of damage to a lot of property in Bangladesh. A lot of things got damaged. I believe the airplane, a flyover got damaged. They were just talking about here, the fiber optics. Buildings got damaged as well. A lot of infrastructure got damaged in Dhaka. So the students are at fault. The government is at fault. Basically, everyone's at fault. And everything, everyone has to take responsibility for this. So... Hopefully, the things can get better in Bangladesh. Hopefully, the situation gets improved, and we'll see what happens, guys, because right now, Bangladesh is just a place you probably shouldn't be visiting right now after all this chaos, and it's a shame because, like I said, guys, it's generally not a bad country. It's generally a safe country, guys. Generally, Bangladesh is a country that is safe, isn't it too aggressive and everything like that, but now, recently, it, it's not a country you should be visiting. And honestly, guys, if this continues for a long time, I'm not sure if I'll ever come back. And it, it hurts to say this because I really want to go back. I, I really did enjoy spending time with my relatives, you know, my cousins and everything. But if this continues to keep happening, then I'm sorry. It's it's better that I don't come back. And it's better that my cousins, my relatives move out of Bangladesh. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys uh we'll I'll keep you guys up to date what happens, guys. And if you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below, guys, because I really want to hear you guys' opinions. Because this is a video that I didn't want to do, but I had to do because of the big news. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know if there's any major talking points in the comments section below. And let me know, guys, have you guys ever been to Bangladesh? If you have, let me know your experience in the comments below. 
I'm really interested to hear your guys' comments. Peace out, guys.